असतो मा सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शाति 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 नमस्ते एवरी वन आई बीन आस्ट टू स्पीक अबाउट द मिराकल ऑफ पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग सो आई एम रियली ग्लैड टू सी द इंटरेस्ट इन द पावर ऑफ थॉट प्लीज रिमेंबर पॉजिटिव थॉट इज इक्वल टू पॉजिटिव लाइफ this is the miracle of positive thinking just by the thought process you can change your experience of life and that is why today in this talk we will be discussing the basic principles of positive thinking and how to apply apply them practically in our lives you can think your way into health wealth great achievement a great career relationships family all of this or you can think your way out of all these also have you seen this in your own life hmm? enough positive thought and you get enough inner energy to do to achieve whatever you want to achieve and without this positive thinking without understanding the value of your thought process you can also uh, brood over something go into a uh, depressive states of mind anxieties fears and lose all your energy so there can be no achievement in such a life so positive thinking is the great miracle thought is the master key to a great life thought can create a heaven out of hell and can create a hell out of heaven also it all depends on how you handle your thought process and this is one thing which actually should be taught to every young person as children if we are conditioned and thought taught these basic principles you are assured of a great life no matter what your circumstances what your surroundings are like you can always generate the level of positive experience you you want in your life just by handling your thought process because please remember what you think will manifest in your life this is the power of thought thought becomes reality please see the objects around you they were thoughts in somebody's mind maybe you are sitting in a hall there are chairs and tables and what not around you please remember each of these objects was a thought in somebody's mind which became so intense that it materialized into an object and today we are using these objects so everything is the product of thought and if we do not know how to handle this thought mechanism we have not learned the fundamentals of life let me introduce you to the principles of positive thinking the first principle is what you repeatedly think you will become if it is about yourself you will become what you are repeatedly thinking if it is thinking about something else that thing will manifest in your life for example if i repeatedly keep on thinking oh i am happy i am successful i am so uh, i i am a person who is able to achieve anything in life that one become my experience and if i repeatedly think or am uh, conditioned to think negatively about myself like oh why do i feel this fear this worry is so harrowing if i have a tendency to think in this wise then that will be my experience that will manifest in my life just like how objects are manifestations of somebody's thought whatever you think holds the poten potency for manifestation in the future so please remember this is the power of your thought process and that is why thought should be deliberate conscious guided this is the miracle of positive thinking to put it very briefly you know there is a mechanism which helps you do this naturally this is what we call yoga the ability to become more and more conscious from within so that our thoughts are deliberate they are they are conscious effort at achieving whatever you want to achieve in life they are guarantees to your success in life your own thoughts and if they are not conscious then some preconditioned idea some preconditioned emotion can even take you into very negative ways of thinking so please remember the first principle is what you think repeatedly that you will become that will manifest in your life 
this is the fundamental idea and you can increase this power of positive thinking through the practice of yoga when you become deeply conscious from within you have a perfectly guided conscious thought process the second principle of positive thinking is what you will repeatedly feel you will experience you will attract it into your life check your life and see if this is true or not whatever you repeatedly feel if, we, if they are happy emotions if they are things that gladden you you know your mind will perpetually remain in that state it will draw those experiences into your life and if you are perpetually used to negative moods you are used to some form of bitterness or resentment anger hatred in some form then that will become your experience a negative experience of life you will attract negative forces into your life if you perpetually dwell upon them so this is the second important principle of positive thinking what you repeatedly feel you will attract into your experience you will actually experience it even if you don't want to feel it yet you dwell upon it there is there will be this tendency to experience it bring it into your experience so dwell only on positivity radiate positivity through your well guided thought process it's only a matter of practice you have to practice positive thinking and positive feelings and the third principle of positive thinking is what you imagine that you will you will create everything around you was somebody's imagination this is the power of human imagine, imagination that it is in the mind and it is a complete picture in the mind tomorrow it will be a reality in front of you it will frame your reality and thus your experience of life so remember these three faculties thought feeling and imagination have been bestowed upon us to lead a fulfilling great life to fulfill your the purpose of your human birth and they are not meant to drive you into any form of negativity but if they are not to a certain extent trained if you do not practice this miracle of positive thinking consciously you can suffer a whole lot of depressive negative habits and a whole lot of that's why you know the states of mind which are which are sad moods which are you are not able to overcome compulsive thinking and habits all this can come into our life if we do not understand these principles it's all about practice deliberately practice positive thinking positive feeling and positive imagination this is the essence of the miracle of positive thinking there is a common story which sri ramakrishna used to say which demonstrates these principles basic principles which we are discussing This story is about a woodcutter who went to a forest to cut wood. So after he had done his job he was very tired and he rested under the tree. As he was lying under that tree he started suddenly started imagining oh i wish i had something better to lie down upon because this ground is so hard and then to his great surprise a kind of royal couch came up there and he sat on it very royally and he thought what is this wonder of wonders from where did this come now i really wish i had some good food because i'm so tired and you know an array of princely dishes very good food appeared before him and he helped himself and then he thought really what is this happening i'm just thinking about something and it's happening and then i wish i had something to drink now and a whole lot of wonderful colorful drinks appeared before him all kinds of wines and fruit juices and everything that he he could want and then he helped himself and he thought what is this really happening how is this happening and then he thought oh my legs are aching my hands are aching i wish somebody was there to press my hands and feet and yes a whole array of maids appeared and did all these services to him so then he thought this is something very strange whatever i am imagining is happening whatever i think is materializing now what if a tiger appears here and a tiger actually appeared and then he was full of fear and he continuously thought oh my god now i am finished 
It's going to eat me up. And the tiger pounced upon it and, and ate him up. This is the story. Now, what is this story trying to tell us? You see, the tree under which he was sitting, he didn't know it was the wish-fulfilling tree of common mythology, what we call the Kalpataru. Because when you sit under that tree, whatever you wish for will actually happen. It will materialize in front of you. So he was sitting under that tree unknowingly. And that's why whatever he thought actually happened. So then Sri Ramakrishna says, you know, this wish-fulfilling tree, this Kalpataru is nothing but your mind. Whatever you wish, whatever you think repeatedly, that will happen. Whatever you feel repeatedly, that you will experience. And whatever you imagine, you will create. So you may not want to experience the tiger, but if you repeatedly think of the tiger, you will create a tiger. So, take charge of your mind. That is the message. The Kalpataru is figurative of our own mind. It is a very powerful instrument given in our hands. You will agree to this, that this system, this body-mind complex, is the most sophisticated instrumentation on the planet. Given to us to lead a really fulfilling human life. Now, how we handle this is entirely up to us. If we know the miracle of positive thinking, we will use this thought mechanism to bring into our life whatever we want. And if we do not know these basic principles, life will just happen by, by chance, by accident, not consciously. And that is why the power of yoga is required in order to effectively handle your thought process. Because the more conscious you become from within, the better you can handle your mind. And the more unconscious you are, the better external experiences will handle you. External objects will handle you. So let us briefly discuss how the mind functions. Please see this. Your thoughts, the, the conscious part of your mind is generating all of your thoughts. Now most of your thoughts are determined by the sense intake, which you take in through your eyes and your ears what you're constantly seeing, what you're hearing, that is creating your thought world, the thoughts in your conscious mind. These thoughts do not just remain there. Once you have repeated them, you have gone through them again and again, they go into your subconscious mind and become your sanskars, your tendencies or strong impressions in your subconscious, which will again become thoughts in the future. So again, when they fructify as thoughts in your conscious mind, you call them memories. So all of your thought world is either sense intake or memories. Now, the principles of yoga actually train you to become more and more conscious, which means to increase the extent of your conscious mind so that you are careful about what you focus on. So that your sense intake is always good and noble and pure. So that the thoughts arising in your mind are of that kind. Because your sense intake creates the nature of your thoughts and your memories. Once your conscious thoughts are well regulated, they become your impressions and they will create your memories. So your memories are always positive and good. This is how you increase the, con the, the capacity of your conscious mind. You make it more aware profoundly aware so that you are able to regulate your thought process. You are able to take in the right stuff just like how while eating we take in only good stuff, isn't it? That which is healthy, that which is nutritious, that which is clean. So also whatever you take in through the senses, you will regulate that content because you have become deeply conscious from within. And once your thought world is regulated, whatever happens there, whatever you repeat there, will actually manifest in your life. This is, way, this is the way to handle the thought mechanism. And this is what yoga psychology provides you with this entire knowledge of how your mind functions. Let me give you a few practical tips towards this. How to practice the miracle of positive thinking practically? The first thing is, don't dwell merely on your present situation. Just now if you think and start saying, oh, there's this pandemic, and that's why I'm, I'm feeling so sad. Don't attribute all this to anything. Your thought process is in your hands. You really are 
perfectly conscious of what you are thinking. All you have to do is change the nature of this thought process. You can very well use language like this in the present situation that here is a chance for me to grow from within. Here is a chance for me to learn something new, to explore myself fully. So that is the language you can use instead of brooding over something, instead of regretting and repenting over something, use positive language in your mind. This is the first practical tip. The second tip is think only of what your life should be and not what your present circumstances are. Because remember, life does not create thoughts. Thoughts create life. If you are thinking positive continuously, your life will be positive. But if you have left it to some something else, then you never know what your life would be like. Because, please remember this and I repeat it, your thoughts create your life. Your life does not create your thoughts. You are primarily an embodied mind. This cognitive capacity in the human being, that is, that is the great development born out of eons of evolution. You must use it properly, isn't it? So condition it to work in this way that my thoughts will actually call my life. Your thoughts actually create your life. So you have in you the power to create the kind of life you want depending on your thoughts. The third important tip is whatever you give energy to, that you will attract into your life. So if you are giving energy to your worries and fears, there will be this tendency to live a fearful, worrisome life. You will attract such experiences towards you. You will remain in negative states of mind because you are giving them energy through your negativity. So get rid of this completely by constantly affirming positivity, by saying to yourself, I have no fear. I am a child of God. I am a spark of the infinite. How can I have fear? Everything is positive in my life. Everything will be well with me. For God is with me. My mind is with me. What can stand against me? If you radiate, if you affirm this positivity continuously into your mind, you are giving energy only to positive thoughts. Only positive experiences will come into your life. Please practice this. This is to be practiced. On no account should you brood or dwell on anything negative because then you will be energizing that and although you don't want to experience it by energizing it you activate it so take care of this constantly keep a check on your mind and keep affirming positive statements in your mind and you will see the very experience of life will change suppose you have to go out somewhere to serve somebody say if your mind is in doubt, should I go out in the midst of this pandemic and do this job? But if you say to yourself, all will be well, everything will be well. I have tried this out myself. It works magically. It will be well because your entire system will follow your thought process. So practice this and see. This is really like magic. The fourth uh, tip, practical tip which I would like to give you is, Please remember, you are not going to become what others believe you to be. You will only become what you believe yourself to be. So don't give the reins in somebody's hands foolishly because they, it doesn't belong there. Only what you believe about yourself will become your reality. You will manifest that. And what others believe about you will come and it will go also. It will change. But what you believe yourself to be, that will that is the actual fact about you and that is all you need for your success in life. So always have faith, great faith in yourself. Vivekananda used to insist upon this absolutely. He is an atheist, he would say, who has no faith in himself, not who has no faith in God, but who has no faith in himself. So believe in your own, every day affirm your own great destiny your own great future. Imagine it, think about it, dwell on it and affirm it through thought and word constantly and you will achieve it. This is the simple thing. And then, if you radiate this positivity, the next step is anything negative standing on your path will be just blown away. If you practice this positive thinking, 
Just like how say you are walking on the road. If there's a rock, you will just kick the rock aside, isn't it? If you are very goal oriented. So also, if you have practiced this positive thinking, it naturally will give you goal orientation and it will remove any negativity from your life. This is the miracle of positive thinking. And the last tip is, please remember this sentence. Your life is only 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to what happens to you. Only 10% of your circumstances Whatever is happening in your surroundings are going to matter. The rest is all your reaction. So if your reaction is positive, very mature, very stable, because you are stable within yourself, you will have a wonderful experience of life. That is what life is meant for. It must be a fulfilling, completely fulfilling experience, isn't it? This is possible only through the miracle of positive thinking. Please see the life of great achievers. You would find this. Their mindset was like this. Completely different completely positive. How do we practice affirming this positivity? Let me tell you a story here. This is a real life story. It is about two boys who grew up in a slum. And these two boys, I often tell this story just to demonstrate that what is it that actually builds a great life. These two boys who were growing up in a slum were a uh, very young. The younger one was five years old. They were brothers. The elder one was seven years. And the mother had left them and the father was a drunkard. So they actually had no means for education and sometimes even no food at home. This was the condition. And the father would come at night drunk and batter them. And so these two boys were in a very pathetic state. But the younger boy had great grit in him. He thought, I want to get out of this. I don't want to live such a life. I don't want to live in this slum. And so he deliberately went and got enrolled himself in the slum school and began his education. He concentrated on his goals because he envisioned a great life. He repeatedly thought about it, about what he wanted to become, not what he was in. What he wanted to become, where he wanted to go. And he became a very bright student. Then further on he went, he got a scholarship after he finished school. Then he completed his MBA. He went to the US and finally by the age of 30, he became the CEO of a huge company and a millionaire. And this, his success story became very famous because he, you see, he had come from very dire circumstances and yet such a fabulous success. Then he started uh, helping young, struggling boys in the Mumbai slum. And then one famous magazine covered his entire story. And then they, when they interviewed him, they asked him, Sir, can you tell us what made you become what you have become? And this boy said that it was my positive focus. I knew what I wanted to be. And what else would one become with a father like that, with surroundings like that? Naturally, it will want you to overcome all the negative influences around you. This was his expression. And the same magazine also interviewed his elder brother, who was still in the same slum, leading the same kind of life, following in the footsteps of his father. And when they asked him, Sir, why did you become what you have become? Can you imagine he gave the same answer? He said, what would one become with circumstances like this, with a father like this? See the difference, same circumstances, same surroundings, same family. Yet one is such a shining star, such an asset. And the other one has not made anything of himself just because he never thought of the good life. Thinking is all that matters. That is why this great capacity of the human mind has been bestowed upon this race. Uh, the, the uh, not race, the humankind, this species, so that we evolve into our divine nature. Through this thought mechanism, you can actually evolve in life or you can devolve. It all depends on how you handle it. And that is why the affirmation process and positive thinking that I'm talking about, it is going to play a crucial role in your life, especially in the lives of youngsters. This is something to be practiced. We even give affirmation meditations which are of the nature of this. You sit in a very 
uh, with a very stirring uh, mind, the, which means in a, in a sort of meditative state. Sit still completely and affirm within yourself again and, and again and again that I am verily all power is within me. All strength is within me. I am a child of God. All power is within me. The very source of existence is in me. And that is why I can manifest in my life whatever I want. All energy is within me. All strength is within me. And there are no obstacles on my path. For the simple reason, God is with me. My mind is with me. If you keep affirming these statements, my future is, will be great. My destiny is divine. Because my source is divine. This will actually materialize in your life. So like a meditation, these affirmations have to be practiced. Especially when you are facing a crisis, when you are in negative situations, just change your mental dialogue. Still yourself and practice these affirmations. And it, this will actually happen in your life. Vivekananda gives us these formulas. He would say, take care of your thought process. You are verily what your thoughts have made you. So take care of what you think. He would say, all power is within you. You can do anything and everything. Believe in this. He would say, call upon the sleeping soul and see how it awakens. Power will come, glory will come, goodness will come, purity will come. All that is excellent will come once the soul is aroused to self-conscious activity. So with the power of meditation and yoga, you can unfold these positive affirmations and draw to yourself the positive life through your own positive energy. This is a perfect possibility. Never break down with circumstances and never blame anybody. This is, you see, a sign of your mental health. Do you blame others? Do you brood? Are you, is your worry constant, a constant thing with you? These are all signs of mental health. If you are not doing all this, that means you are radiating positivity. So these are the simple life lessons which we have to learn. You see, spirituality generates life skills and will definitely help you lead a better life if you know these basic principles. Otherwise, the mind will carry on its own function and you have no hold over it. So you are being led. This is what is called a compulsive life. You are, being, you are compelled to move in a particular direction because you have no hold over your own instrumentation. So get out of this compulsiveness through focusing on positivity and positive thinking. This is the great miracle of life. I will end this talk with just one more story because stories are something you remember. This is the story of a temple in a small town in India. So this temple was very beautiful, although it was not very big. And a whole lot of people would visit this temple. And there was a beautiful marble image of Lord Krishna in this temple, which they, they used to say was very living and would answer all pr prayers. So scores of people would visit this temple and they had to go through a, a number of stairs which were also made of marble and reach the, uh, the Garbhagriha, the actual place where the idol was placed. So one day it so happened, people would bring so many things for worship and leave it around the image and the priest would come every day and do his uh, worship. So like this it was going on. One day it so happened that at night, when there was nobody around, this image of Lord Krishna suddenly heard a lot of whispering going on. The steps were whispering. The steps which led to the idol, they were whispering. And what were they saying? They were saying, Oh, you know, this statue, he is made of the same rock out of which we are made. The same piece of rock was made into a marble statue and then these steps. So, but he gets all the worship. And we, uh, we are actually trampled upon to go to him. So what kind of justice is this? We actually, the souls of both the statue and the steps is the same. Then Lord Krishna heard this and then he told them, Look, my brothers, it is true that you and me, 
are made of the same rock this physical statue through which i manifest it is made of the same substance as you but you know when the sculptors came and chose a, a huge piece of rock a, a boulder to be converted into first they wanted to remove the portion which they would make into the image so they started blowing and chiseling the rock when they started cutting the rock you immediately broke down you threw up a whole lot of dust tantrums and you broke down why me that chunk of rock which would be made into an image i took blow after blow after blow i was chiseled and shaped and sculptured into this beautiful statue that is why today i receive all the worship and because you broke down you were put aside to be made into steps so if you are able to take the blows of life positively and learn from them and chisel yourself into a divine image then you actually reach the fulfillment of your life and if you break down go into negativity keep complaining bitterness jealousy criticism then you will go into very negative states of mind and you will only become the steps it is in your hands whether you want to become a divine image or you want to become just the steps leading to the divine image it all depends on how you have taken the different circumstances of your life have you been positive have you been negative did you break down or did you rise up it all depends on your thought process ultimately that is why the bhagavad gita gives us the message uddharet atmana atmana na atmanam avasadayet atmaiva hyatmano bandhu atmaiva ripuratmana which means raise yourself by yourself do not demean yourself by yourself because you are your greatest friend or you are your greatest enemy how you handle your thought mechanism determines whether you are your friend or your enemy if you keep it positive you are your best friend you will achieve everything in life if you keep it negative you never know where you will land up it it entirely depends on how you have handled thought so let me summarize the miracle of positive thinking what you think repeatedly you will become you will manifest in your life what you feel repeatedly you will experience and attract into your life and what you imagine repeatedly you will actually create in your life thank you very much